Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. This is Justina with Justina T Handmade. Uh, in today's tutorials, I'm gonna walk you through how to create this cute little crossbody bag. Uh, I'm calling this bag on the go uh, crossbody because it's a great um, bag to uh, to have uh, with you when you're running out to a grocery or a quick errand. Uh, just enough room to have all your essentials with you, uh, but nothing huge that will get in your way. Um, so this bag features a front slip pocket secured with a magnetic snap. It will fit a cell phone easily. On the back, you have a, a zipper pocket with a zipper overlay. This piece will be provided as a printable pattern piece. Inside, uh, you have two slip pockets and a security hook, uh, so you can hook your keys or your uh, wallet uh, if it has a tap. So the, making sure that uh, it's not gonna, you're not gonna lose um, your most valuable item. The inspiration for this bag was this cute. Uh, dog face print. Uh, I wanted to to make something for my sister uh, who loves uh, animals and has two dogs. Uh, but I also want to make sure that when when we are purchasing the vinyl uh, sheets, we can use the whole thing and not waste any of it. So as you can see, uh, a good chunk of it is used for the front pocket. Uh, another piece is used for the zipper overlay. And the tiny little piece that is the card cut out for the uh, zipper opening is used as an embellishment for the security hook. Uh, this, this pattern uh, is available in my Etsy store. Uh, this pattern doesn't come with a written instruction. This video uh, serves as a visual instructions for the pattern. Uh, the pattern file that you purchase will include a full supply list, a full cut list, and uh, intro notes for the pattern, uh, along with the link to my YouTube channel where you can always uh, come back and refer to the video instructions on how to create this pack. Uh, if this is your uh, first time visiting my channel, I'm, I'm happy you found me. And if you do enjoy this tutorial, please make sure to subscribe to my channel and to uh, give the video a thumbs up. Uh, if you're a return viewer, I'm happy that uh, you enjoy my tutorials and that you are coming back for more. Uh, please make sure uh, that you join my Facebook group and um, that you follow me on Instagram. So you're always going to be in the know what's coming up uh, and you're going to have access to uh, freebies and discounts on my pattern. And now, if you want to see how this cute little crossbody bag comes together, please keep watching. To start our project, uh, we're going to prep all our pattern pieces. Uh, you're going to refer to the cut list. Everything will be listed there and the uh, uh, zipper overlay piece uh, will be provided as a printable uh, template. So I'm just going to run through them really quickly. Uh, so for the uh, front of the bag, I just attached the main zipper here. This is the uh, upper panel that is cut out, out of uh, waterproof canvas. Uh, our lining for our front pocket and our and our main bottom panel uh, of the front of the back. Uh, for the uh, back outer, we're gonna have our main uh, panel, which is waterproof canvas, and our uh, supplies for our uh, zipper pocket. So you're gonna have the zipper overlay, a zipper tape cut to size, and two lining pieces. For the uh, inside uh, lining, you're gonna have two lining panels uh, and two uh, slip bucket uh, panels. Uh, also, you're gonna need uh, webbing tape. I'm gonna be using this half an inch uh, nylon webbing tape. Also, we're gonna need some rivets 
uh, back tack if that's something you want to do i'm going to be using this uh, tiny screwdriver to attach my uh, zipper end uh, if you don't have a zipper end you can just go back to my uh, previous uh, videos for um, example the aster uh, zipper pouch and there's going to be instructions how to make your own zipper end i have my zipper pulls my half an inch d-ring tabs half an inch slider adjuster and uh, my magnetic snap those are as all elements for the back. Uh, I'm going to also show you how to make a small addition uh, because I'm using a, a sheet of vinyl that usually comes in a set uh, of different prints and I don't want to have any waste. Um, I, am, I decided to add a little uh, security clip inside the back. Uh, so I'm going to be using some webbing tape and I'm going to be using this little piece that is the cutout of the zipper overlay to just embellish this uh, little security clip inside my back. So now that we have all our pattern pieces uh, prepped, we're going to start the work on assembly of our back. Uh, first, we're going to start with the uh, accent front uh, bottom panel of the outside of the back. Uh, so you're going to take your a bottom panel of the front outer you're gonna take the lining of the uh, front outer packet uh, I uh, interfaced my lining with just a, a medium weight uh, non-woven interfacing just to give it a little more body but this is optional uh, if you like your back stiffer you can use something that that has more uh, body to it uh, if you don't care about the back being stiff, um, you can skip interfacing, uh, the back will hold up either way. Alrighty, so we have our bottom panel. You want to make sure if you're using a directional print uh, that this is your top. Uh, then you're going to take your uh, lining piece and you're going to align uh, the shorter edge with the top edge of your outer panel. and and clip together. When you have that ready, you're gonna take it to the machine and you're gonna sew along this edge with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and 2.5 stitch length. When you have the uh, two panels sewn together, you're gonna open the project, you're gonna finger press the lining. Uh, if you uh, like to, you can uh, take it to the ironing board and iron the lining. Uh, just be very careful if you're using vinyl, always use a pressing cloth and try to iron from the wrong side of the vinyl just to make sure you're not going to damage your vinyl. When you have uh, that done, you're going to fold the front panel on about uh, three fourths of an inch. So you want to make sure that you, you are folding the outer panel, secure that with clips. Make sure that the fold is straight. And when you have uh, the panel prepped like this, you're going to take it back to the machine and you're going to top stitch along the folded part of the panel with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and 3.5 stitch length. When you have your panel top stitched, uh, now we're gonna install our uh, male part of our magnetic snap. You wanna find the midpoint of your panel. Uh, and using the washer, you're gonna you're gonna place the washer of the magnetic snap about one fourth of an inch from the top edge and you're gonna mark the slits. Now you're gonna make the slits, making sure you are cutting not through the outside, just the folded part of the panel. Insert the snap. Uh, 
and the uh, male part of the magnetic snap is installed. Now that we have that done, we're gonna place the unit uh, lining uh, side up. You're gonna take uh, the upper uh, outer front panel and you're gonna place it right sides together along the other short edge of the lining and secure with clips. When you have that prepped, you're gonna take it to the machine and you're gonna sew along this edge with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and 2.5 stitch length. After the upper panel is sewn onto our lining, you can finger press it or you can take it to the ironing board and iron it. Just a note, if you are using waterproof canvas, don't iron it on the wrong side of the fabric because uh, you're gonna damage uh, the rubbery coat uh, coating of the a waterproof canvas and uh, also you may damage your iron so that just a note if you prefer you can also top stitch the lining onto uh, the seam allowance of, of the upper uh, panel uh, but if your lining uh, lies nice and flat uh, you are good to go now uh, we're gonna work on finishing up our uh, packet so you want to bring the uh, bottom panel of the outer up. You want the bottom panel, the packet panel to overlap the uh, seam line of the lining by about three fourths of an inch. Uh, in case your seam allowances were a little off, uh, you want to make sure that you are creating the front panel that's going to be exactly the same size like the back panel. So now you can compare those two. If they are the same uh, size, that's perfect. If one of them is uh, shorter or longer, you can just remedy this by uh, overlapping the packet uh, more or less. So you just want to make sure that you're both uh, back and front panels are the same size before you uh, base the front packet uh, in place. Mine is uh, looking good, so uh, I'm gonna take my uh, panel to the machine and I'm gonna baste the sides of the packet to the lining so uh, they are nice and secure. Now that uh, your packet is based um, to the bottom panel, uh, we're gonna install our uh, female part of our snap. To do that, you wanna transfer the placement of the male uh, snap onto the upper panel. And now using the washer, you're gonna mark the slits. Uh, also, if you want to reinforce your fabric where the magnetic snap going to be, you can just add some scraps of uh, any interfacing. I just put two scraps of uh, Peltex. So now I'm going to cut my snips. And install my female part of the snap. And now we also want to install two rivets on each side of the packet, one and a quarter inch away from our uh, side edges. So take a ruler, mark the placement. So you're gonna be marking one and a quarter inch from the side and about uh, one fourth of an inch from the top. and uh, install uh, rivets on, on the marked uh, points. If you don't have a rivet uh, or you don't like uh, or you don't like the look, you can also uh, top stitch the top of the packet onto your panel following the initial top stitch uh, seam line. So you would just top stitch up to the uh, inch and a quarter mark um, just make sure you backstitch or secure the stitch uh, on uh, on the end of the seam. 
So now I'm gonna install my rivets. So now my packet uh, is completed. Um, at this point, you can also install a back tag. Uh, you can install it on the panel itself. Just make sure you are not uh, punching through your lining or you can install it on the top panel uh, because my bottom panel has a print on it. I'm gonna install it about an inch uh, above the edge of the packet on the upper panel. Uh, my front of the back panel is now ready. I can move on to my back panel now, so I'm gonna put it aside. So you're gonna take your uh, back outer panel. You wanna make sure you have it in the correct way. So you wanna make sure that the panel is wider than taller. You can uh, compare it to the front panel, so you just make sure you have the right way uh, around. You're gonna take your little overlay panel. You wanna uh, prep it with the double-sided tape. So you're gonna place strips of double-sided tape in the middle of the long edges. Remove the backing of one of the uh, strips. And now you wanna place the zipper overlay two inches from the top edge of your panel, making sure it's centered. So we wanna finger press our fabric. So we have the center crease I'm gonna do the same thing with our panel. We wanna mark two inches from the top. When you are happy how the uh, overlay is placed, now we can uh, remove the backing of the rest of the double-sided tape. When you have the overlay now uh, secure with the double-sided tape onto the back panel, you're gonna take it to the machine and you're gonna top stitch only along the outside edge of the panel with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and 3.5 stitch length. You can back stitch it or you can pull your thread on the back side uh, when, uh, where the seam uh, meets. So just take it to the machine and top stitch along the overlay with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and 3.5 stitch length. After your overlay is sewn in and I opted in to pull my thread on the back side of my project, uh, we gonna cut out the zipper opening in our main uh, panel fabric. So what you wanna do, you can fold the panel in half, making sure it's aligned and you're not gonna be cutting the overlay, just snip a hole in the middle. And now cut out a fabric that it's inside of your opening. You want the opening in the main fabric to be larger than your overlay, so it's not gonna peek through when we are uh, when we sew in our uh, zipper packet in.
the cutout doesn't have to be pretty uh, nobody will ever see it so don't worry about it just make sure uh, it's larger than the opening in the overlay and do not cut the overlay while you're cutting it out so it looks nice and neat from the right side so now that we have our zipper opening prepped we're gonna be working on the lining for our uh, packet so you're gonna take the two lining panels for your uh, zipper packet and the zipper cut to size one of the panels is larger and one of them is smaller you want to make sure that the smaller lining panel uh, is the front panel of your uh, packet and the larger one is the back uh, if you are working with the zipper tape without the zipper pull on you don't have to pay attention to it right now if you are working with a zipper that has already zipper pull on you want to make sure that your zipper pull is on the left side when your zipper is closed so you are gonna be working with the bigger panel first you're gonna place the zipper tape teeth side up on the right side of your lining and clip the top edge Now you're gonna flip the project so you can see the wrong side of the lining and the zipper tape is still teeth side up. You're gonna take the other uh, zipper packet lining and align the other edge of the zipper with the longer edge of the lining panel. When you have your panels prepped like this, you're gonna take it to the machine and you're gonna base the zipper tape onto your lining. You wanna place uh, the zipper with both linings towards, uh, towards the left side. So you're only sewing through a zipper edge and one lining. You're gonna baste one side, then you're gonna flip your project, making sure the sewn in side of the lining is nice and flat and that you sewing only through the one lining and and the zipper uh, tape so take it to the machine and baste uh, the lining panels onto the zipper tape with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance now that my zipper is based onto my lining panels and i also iron the unit so it stays nice and flat and now I'm gonna insert my zipper pull. And like I said, I want the zipper to close when pulled from the left to the right, because this is a packet on the back of my purse. So I'm gonna make sure that the bigger panel is on the top uh, and the smaller one is on the bottom when I insert the zipper pull from the left. Now I'm gonna make sure I have the lining place in the correct position. I'm gonna pull the zipper up to up to about an inch from the right side edge of the zipper. I'm gonna use some double-sided tape and I'm gonna place it along the zipper edges. I'm gonna remove the backing from the upper zipper tape edge only. And now I'm gonna place the panel, making sure it's centered in my uh, zipper overlay opening. When I'm happy with the placement, I'm have overhang on both ends i'm happy with the i'm happy how the zipper tape is placed inside of my opening i'm gonna remove the other uh, the backing from the other strip And now that I have my uh, packet lining secured inside of my zipper overlay opening, uh, I'm gonna take it to the machine and I'm gonna top stitch along the opening in the overlay, making sure my lining stays nice and open. 
and you want to make sure that at this point you can see the right side of the lining open on the back of your project and uh, your zipper is correctly uh, attached inside of your uh, zipper overlay. So take this to the machine and top stitch around the opening with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and 3.5 stitch length. Now that we top stitched our uh, zipper packet lining onto our main panel, we're gonna close the packet. So you're just gonna flip the top lining panel onto the bottom lining panel, clip together along the sides and the bottom. If you have a little bit of a difference in the in length, like I have a small little difference here, I'm not gonna worry about it because it's within the seam allowance. But if any of your panels it's uh, too long, uh, you can just trim it, uh, and your packet just gonna be a tiny bit smaller. But oh, that's not gonna impeach the functionality of the bag. When you have your lining prepped like this, you're gonna take it back to the machine and you're gonna sew along the uh, both sides and the bottom to close the lining. You can flip the project right side up and sew uh, this way up. So this way you're gonna ensure you're not gonna catch the outer panel uh, in, into your seam. So take it to the machine sew along the sides and the bottom with the 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and 2.5 stitch length. My packet is now closed on those three sides. So now my both outers are prepped. The last thing to do is to attach the uh, main zipper closure. So take your zipper, cut to size, and uh, uh, just a note, um, if you uh, know my tutorials, you know I don't like to put the zipper pull on before uh, it needs to be inserted. Uh, but if that's something that makes you uncomfortable, just cut the zipper uh, a little longer so you can have the zipper on while you're working on the back and it's not going to get into the way of others uh, putting the back together. So that's just a note. I'm going to be working with a separated zipper. Um, but if you if that's something that it's uncomfortable for you, just cut the zipper a couple inches longer, insert the zipper pull, and just secure um, the end so the zipper pull won't slip off. Alrighty, so now we have our zipper tape. We have to prep one end of the zipper first. So uh, we're gonna square off one pair of ends of the zipper so you just want to take it pinch it align the edges and you can pin it and take it to the machine and base stitch it or uh, you can use a light lighter to melt the edges of the zipper uh, tape to just uh, stick it together Just make sure you're not gonna burn yourself and repeat that on the other side. When you have your uh, zipper end squared off, uh, take your front panel. And I like my back to uh, close when the zipper is pulled towards the left but if you are left-handed or you like your back on the other shoulder uh, on the other side um, uh, you can switch the position but um, this is uh, how I like it when I carry my back on the left, left side of my body so I'm gonna attach my zipper with the squared off zipper ends on the left side we want to find the position of the zipper and the zipper are going to be attached an uh, inch and a quarter away from the side uh, edges of our panels. 
So take a ruler and mark inch and a quarter. Take your zipper and place it teeth side down and start clipping it at the one and a quarter mark from the left side. When you get close to the one and a quarter mark on the right side, you wanna use a pin and you wanna pin that placement because uh, when we're gonna be sewing, we're gonna be uh, basting the zipper tape on our outer panel, but we wanna make sure we're gonna slip uh, the long tail of the zipper off uh, so when we are sewing it in it's sewing it on it's not going to be sewn on all the way to the end uh, of our edge we want to make sure the zipper is slipped and we're going to have a free uh, zipper tail on the right side of our back so when you have your panel prepped like this you're going to take it to the machine and you're going to baste the zipper with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance from the start of the zipper to the one and a quarter mark from the side edge of your panel. After I base uh, the zipper onto my front panel, I like to transfer the mark on the zipper tape itself. So when I'm attaching the zipper tape to the uh, back panel, I know I'm gonna have the same length of the zipper tape uh, used. So now I'm gonna split the zipper tape take my outer back panel and you can uh, use the marks of the uh, of the front panel um, just make sure you are placing the panels uh, in uh, in the mirror position so you're gonna transfer the mark on the front top and on the other end. And now you're gonna attach the other uh, part of the zipper tape to the back panel, making sure that your tape is teeth side down and that your folded end is now on the right side. Now you're gonna take a pin again and mark the inch and a quarter position. And now uh, you're gonna take the panel to the machine and you're gonna base the zipper on with the one eighth of an inch seam allowance, starting from that point. So you're gonna pull your tape and you're gonna start sewing on the panel fabric only and then continue the base seam to the end of the zipper. Now that uh, your zipper is sewn in, uh, we're gonna sew together our outer panels. So you wanna place both of them right sides together and clip along the bottom edge. And when you have that done, you're gonna take it to the machine and you're gonna sew along the bottom edge with a 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and 2.5 stitch length. Now that the bottom edges are sewn together, we're gonna top stitch the seam allowances. Uh, if you are using a fabric that you can just iron and it stays nicely in place, uh, you can just iron the seam uh, open so it lies nice and flat on the bottom of your uh, back. I'm using vinyl, so I'm gonna open the seam allowances on the wrong side and then I'm gonna top stitch the seam allowances, making sure they are uh, behind corresponding panels. And I'm gonna top stitch along the bottom seam with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance uh, and 3.5 stitch length. Now that my bottom seam is uh, butterflied and top stitch, I can put the 
uh, sides together. So you're gonna bring the top edges together. You wanna make sure that your zipper aligns nicely. So that's what you wanna clip first and then clip the sides. Keep the long tails of the zipper out of the way of the seam. When you have both sides clipped together, uh, you're gonna take it to the machine and you're gonna sew the sides with the 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance and 2.5 stitch length. Make sure that your zipper tails are out of the way of the seam. Now that my side seams are sewn, I'm gonna work on boxing my corners. I'm gonna mark one inch squares on each side. And because this seam line is, uh, this seam allowance is folded, so this is the seam line, I'm gonna measure from the bottom edge and from the seam line uh, on the side. So you wanna make sure you are measuring from the bottom because that's the seam line and from the seam line on the sides. Now that you have it marked, uh, we're gonna cut it out. And we're gonna box our corners. So you wanna make sure that your uh, side seam is aligning with the bottom seam. And now when you have both corners prepped like this, uh, you're gonna take it back to the machine and you're gonna sew along those two cut edges with the 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and 2.5 stitch length, back stitch well on the beginning and on the end of the seam. Now that the uh, corners are boxed, uh, we're gonna trim the seam allowances to about a half. And we're going to turn the project right side out. Now you can inspect your bag, making sure everything looks good and nothing needs to be fixed. Uh, I'm pleased how my back is looking. Everything looks nice and neat. So our outer is almost prepped. The last thing uh, to do is to attach our uh, D-ring tabs. So you're gonna take your uh, webbing tape that is cut to size uh, for your tabs and your D-rings. And um, you can use one inch uh, webbing tape if you like. Uh, that's completely up to you. I'm uh, using a half an inch, so I'm gonna be using a half an inch D-rings. You wanna thread D-rings on each of the webbing tape. And attach uh, each of them on each side of your bag. And uh, here you have an option. You can just attach it straight like this or if you think that's gonna be too bulky for you to uh, complete the final top stitching uh, seam you can split uh, the webbing tape so it creates a little v-shape and this way you're gonna have less bulk on the top seam So I want to make sure it's it's in a equal distance from the 
from my zipper so i just want to make sure it looks nice and neat you're just gonna uh, have that kind of look on the uh, when your back is finished do the same thing on the other side and as you can see i'm overlapping the, the tape by about three eighths of an inch i want the tape to overhang over the top edge so this way it will the top will have more strength um, and won't come unravel when the back is being used uh, because it will have a, a good amount of extra fabric inside of the seam so when you have a both sides prepped like this you're gonna take it to the machine and you're gonna baste uh, the deering tabs with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance on each side of your project now that my deering tabs are attached i can move on uh, to work on my lining so you're gonna first prep your uh, slip inside packet you you should have two lining panels and two uh, panels for your slip packet uh, i decided to cut two separate panels for the slip packet because i think the top seam on the packet gives the packet a little more strength so that's how i did it if you uh, just want to fold uh, the packet and just have one seam uh, you can just uh, cut the uh, packet panel on fold so now we're gonna prep our slip packet you're gonna put both panels right sides together and you're gonna clip along both long edges when you have the packet clipped like that you're gonna take it to the machine and you're gonna sew along those two long edges with the 3 8 of an inch seam allowance and 2.5 stitch length um, make sure to back stitch on the beginning and on the end on of each seam when you have the packet sewn you're gonna turn it right side out you can finger press it or you can take it to the ironing board and press it with the steam to have a nice crisp edges and when you have it pressed you're gonna take it back to the machine and you're gonna top stitch along one uh, sewn edge the edge that's gonna be the top of your packet so if you have directional fabric just make sure that uh, that your packet will be in the correct uh, position and that you are top stitching the, the top of your slip packet so take it to the machine and top stitch with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and 3.5 stitch line now that my packet is top stitched i'm gonna take one of the lining panels and i'm gonna place it two and a half inches above the bottom edge of my lining make sure it's nice and straight and uh, you can on uh, you can use pins to secure the placement. And now uh, that you have the packet uh, attached to the uh, main lining panel, uh, you're gonna take it to the machine and you're gonna baste the sides and you're gonna top stitch the bottom edge of the packet uh, you're gonna be top stitching with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and 3.5 stitch line. Now that the packet is top stitch on the bottom, so we have the uh, functional packet right now, uh, and it's based on the side, we can divide the packet into smaller packets if that's something you wanna do. If you like one larger packet, um, you can just skip the next step. Uh, if you like, you can just uh, customize uh, the packets to uh, the size of the packets you like. I'm just gonna create two equal size packets. So I'm gonna fold the panel in half. Uh, 
I'm gonna use a heat erase marker to mark my line. And I'm gonna take it back to the machine and I'm gonna create two line of stitches to split my packet into two. I'm gonna be sewing just off the drawn line on the left side. So I'm gonna start from the bottom, sew up to the top, come back one uh, stitch length. Um, I'm gonna go back a couple of times, back and forth. So I have a strong stitch on the top and then I'm gonna come back down just off uh, on the other side of my mark line and I'm gonna make sure that I back stitch well on the beginning and on the end of the seam. Now my packet is split into two. I can now uh, move on to creating my little extra security clip. So like I said, I just wanna use uh, the remaining of my vinyl. So I'm gonna use the piece that it's the cutout uh, in the middle of my zipper overlay. I'm gonna take my uh, webbing tape and cut it about two inches longer than the uh, accent piece and uh, using double-sided tape I'm gonna secure the accent onto the we webbing tape Now I'm gonna place the accent piece in the center of my webbing. And when I have this prepped, I'm gonna take it to the machine and I'm gonna top stitch the accent piece onto the webbing tape with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and 3.5 stitch length. Now that my little accent is attached, I'm gonna insert one of the half an inch swivel clasp on. I'm gonna make sure it's in the middle of my little strap and I'm gonna secure it with a rivet. My little security strap is ready. So I'm gonna take my panel with the packet sewing on and I'm gonna baste it on about three eighths of an inch above my packet. Uh, take your lining to the machine and baste your little security hook uh, onto your lining panel. Now that the lining panel, uh, the inside elements of the lining panels are done, we're gonna put our lining panels together and just a note, if um, if you like a zipper packet inside of your bag, you can uh, add one on. You can actually uh, do exactly what we did on the back of our bag. So you can attach an overlay and then attach a zipper packet or just a regular method of attaching a zipper packet. Those instructions you can find easily uh, on YouTube as well. I'm gonna place both panels right sides together and clip them on the sides and on the bottom. When you have both panels clipped, you wanna mark an opening on the bottom of your lining to be able to turn the project right side out. The opening has about six inches. You just wanna make sure you have a couple inches sewn uh, from each side uh, of your lining because we're gonna be boxing our corners. So you wanna make it as large as possible, but uh, you want a couple inches to be sewn uh, from the side on of the bottom of your uh, lining. Now that the lining uh, is prepped, we're gonna take it to the machine and we're gonna sew on the sides, a small part of the bottom to the marked pins. We wanna make sure we're gonna backstitch well where the pins are and continue our seam towards the top on the other side. 
uh, you can start with the 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance and then gradually increase the seam allowance to half an inch and carry the half an inch seam on the bottom of your lining. So take it to the machine and using 2.5 stitch length, uh, sew your lining together. And make sure you have it the right side up that your pockets opening are on the top. After the lining is sewn, we're gonna box the corners. So you're gonna take your ruler and measuring from the seam allowances, you're gonna measure a one inch per square on each corner. When you have the mark, you're gonna cut them out. Open the corners and clip the cut edges together, nesting the seam allowances against each other. Uh, repeat that on the other side, making sure your seam allowance is folded in the same direction. And when you have that prepped, you're gonna take it to the machine and you're gonna sew along those two row edges with the 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance and 2.5 stitch length. Make sure to back stitch well on the beginning and on the end of each seam. When you have the corners box, you can trim the seam allowances to about a half. And you can just make sure everything is looking good, that uh, your little uh, security hook didn't get caught in the seam. Everything looks good. You're gonna keep the lining wrong side out. You're gonna take your outer, that, and the outer should be right side out. And you're gonna place the outer inside of the lining make sure that you're paying attention to where the slip packets are. I want my slip packets to be on the back of my back, so I'm gonna make sure that my front is against the plain lining panel. Also, I wanna make sure my zipper tails are not gonna be caught in the seam. So I'm gonna place them inside of my bag. I'm gonna start clipping my outer and my lining along the top edge, starting with the side seams. And continue clipping all the way around, making sure your zipper tails are towards the bottom of your purse and are not gonna be caught in a seam. When you have your project prepped like this with the top edges pinned together, you're gonna take it to the machine and you're gonna sew all around with the one fourth of an inch seam allowance and 2.5 stitch length. Uh, make sure that your zipper tails are not caught in the seam. Now that the top seam is done, don't trim the extra length of the uh, deering tabs, just leave them as is. And now you can turn the project right, right side out. My zipper tails are free and good, so that's how I wanted it. 
I want to make sure everything looks nice and straight. I want to pull the lining inside of the back. Flip my zipper in the final position and I'm gonna prep the top seam for top stitching. So I wanna finger press it. You can take it to the ironing board and you can iron the top seam. Just be careful, don't uh, touch uh, your uh, vinyl parts with your iron or you can just use clips to clip the seam in place. When you have your top seam prepped for top stitching, you're gonna take it to the machine and you're gonna top stitch all around with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and 3.5 stitch length and still keep your zipper tails in mind, make sure they are not caught in the seam. The top is now top stitched, so now the only thing left to do when it comes to sewing is to close our lining. So pull the lining out, pull on the ends of the opening, that should make the row edges of the lining fold inside. Secure that with clips. And take it to the machine and top stitch along the opening with the 1 8 of an inch seam allowance and 2.5 stitch length. You can even decrease the seam allowance if that's something you are comfortable with. So the smallest. The smaller uh, seam allowance, the better, better your bottom gonna look. So take it to the machine, top stitch to close the opening in your lining. The lining is close on the bottom. Now we can put it back inside of our bag. Make sure it's nice and snug. And now we can work on finishing up our zipper. So you want to make sure that the fronts uh, are nicely aligned. And install your zipper pull. Make sure it looks nice and straight on the front. And when you're happy how your zipper pull is looking, then we can uh, close our zipper end. You can uh, leave the zipper as long as you like. Uh, I'm gonna uh, trim it, uh, trim the tail by about a half. That leaves me about two inches of a zipper tail. After I cut my zipper, I'm gonna melt the cut end. Take my zipper end, and uh, that comes with a little screw. Fold the zipper tape underneath. You can add a dab of glue inside the zipper end if you like. Insert the zipper end onto the zipper tape. and secure that with the screw. When that's done, you can just slip the end inside of your bag. And now your zipper is completed. The last thing to do is to create our back strap. So take your webbing tape, some rivets, swivel clasps and uh, a sliding adjuster. First, we're gonna attach the sliding adjuster. So you wanna thread 
your webbing tape over the middle bar of the adjuster and then uh, you can secure that with the rivet now i'm gonna run my webbing tape making sure it's not gonna get twisted and i'm gonna thread one of the uh, swivel clasp onto the webbing tape with the hook side down then making sure again that my uh, webbing tape is not twisted i'm gonna thread the open end through my adjuster pull the tape over making sure everything looks correct so that this end looks good again i want to make sure that i want to make sure i'm gonna keep in mind that this is the right side of my uh, of my strap so i want to run the tape again in my hands and this time i want to place uh, the swivel clasp hook side up I'm gonna fold the end of the webbing tape over by about three fourths of an inch and bring it up to create a loop and secure that with the rivet. And now my strap is completed. I can just attach it onto my D-rings. And my bag is ready to use. The project is now completed. Our on-the-go on little crossbody uh, bag is ready to use. It features a nice roomy slip pocket secure with a magnetic snap on the front. It has a handy zipper pocket on the back for your keys and other valuables you want to keep secure. On the top we have a zipper closure inside we have two uh, pretty large slip packet and our security hook uh, so you can hook um, your wallet or your keys something that you want to make sure you're not gonna lose uh, you can you can use the security strap to hook it on I hope you enjoyed this uh, tutorial and that you're gonna give the project a go. If you do, please make sure to share it with me on, uh, on my social media. The links to the Facebook group and to the Instagram are in the description box below. If you wanna uh, grab the pattern, just follow the instructions uh, in the description box below. And I can't wait uh, to see your fun versions of the bag. Till the next time.